Yes, uh, during the, my flight on Gemini 4 in 1965, I saw an object in space fairly close to our spacecraft that I could not identify. It looked to me like maybe the upper stage of another rocket. I tried to take some pictures of it, but unfortunately the, the pictures did not come out properly. Uh, we were, never were able to identify what it was, and all of our ground radar tracking data indicated that there shouldn't have been another object anywhere near us at the time. General McDivitt, do you know anyone else who claims to have seen a UFO? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I know all kinds of people who claim to have seen them. Uh, some of them are very legitimate, and some of them, I think, are just having fun. Well, I, I kind of thought it was people at first, you know, off like that. But of course, when they, when they appeared there in, in front of me, um, it was the most shock I've ever had in my life. They, they, were, they were shorter than me. I'd say about five foot two or three, and they didn't have a neck. The, the head, it seemed to come directly to their shoulders. And it had something uh, that, that came out to a point about where a nose would be, and, and on each side, the ears. And I believe that they looked like they were a little longer on the ears than the nose. But it seemed to me when they came out that doorway, or that opening or whatever it was, then just almost instantly, they were right there on us. Their arms, they had arms, it, and I saw the arms moving here and, and in the shoulders, but they had welds. I mean, their, their fingers were welded, and then they had something like a thumb, and they were like this. Mm -hmm. Congressman, do you believe UFOs are somebody else's spacecraft? Well, I, I hesitate in answering the question only because of this. I don't know, but my imagination tells me that perhaps, just perhaps, there is something that would permit a man to travel faster than light. Perhaps there is something that would permit an intelligent form of life from another planet revolving around another star to make that long trip. Does our military have in its possession the twisted metal remains of crashed UFOs, the charred bodies of space crewmen? I don't know. There are no easy answers, but one thing is clear. With the formidable resources at its disposal, the American military has to have the best collection of UFO data in the world. And I really think it's time they shared that data with the people. I must say I have some sympathy for the military, especially the Air Force, whose province is, after all, the wild blue yonder. What do you do when something unknown is penetrating your airspace and you can't cope with it? The bureaucratic solution seems to be, when in doubt, classify. But I also have real sympathy with the people who are the victims of this policy, people whose lives will never be the same because they had the courage to report what they saw. I admit, some people have been seeing some pretty strange things lately. One of the strangest and most bizarre is the appearance of huge hairy creatures that walk upright on two legs and are frequently sighted in areas where UFO activity has been reported. Dr. Siegel, is it likely, in your opinion, that cloned man will become a reality in the near future? The very definite possibility exists that in the foreseeable future it will be possible to clone the most complex mammal of all, man himself. I have seen UFOs, but in all of those news stories, I've detected one missing fact, one incredible, glaring omission. Not one world public agency or scientific group has even offered a partial solution to this most amazing mystery of all time. No public authority has told us who are the overlords of the UFO. And why are they here, right now, at this time? Another significant UFO picture shows not only the anti-gravity device operational, but also with it is a smaller degravitated sphere under the control of the alien intelligences of the UFO. UFO Quebec. Carried this sketch of a UFO humanoid Truman with a map of the star system in the vicinity of Zeta Reticuli, many light years away. Uh, I think every government in the world has three major problems along these lines with regard to UFOs. One, they'd like themselves to figure out how it works because it makes a great weapons delivery system. It makes anything worth flying look pretty naive by comparison. Two, you'd want to make sure that the other guy doesn't figure out how to duplicate their behavior because then you have a defense problem. If he's got something that flies like these things, we got a problem because we can't handle it. And three, perhaps most important, a kind of philosophical, political problem, 
as soon as it becomes obvious to the people on the planet and widely accepted that flying saucers are real and from off the earth, there's going to be a push for a view of man as earthlings. The people on this planet, instead of I'm an American or Russian or Chinese, I'm an earthling. There is no government that wants its citizens to owe their primary allegiance to the planet as opposed to the country. Nobody wants to give up their power. And you know, all these jokes about take me to your leader, that's wishful thinking. What's funny about those is that there is no leader to be taken to. There's nobody who speaks for planet Earth. So there are enormous political problems with anybody saying, yes, there's somebody out there and he's coming here and he doesn't want to talk to me as a representative of the planet. 